oops, I actually forgot to make an opening for today's broadcast. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel. Welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 228. This is the one uh, we're taking another look at Jeet Kune Do attribute training. As you're logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, hit the like button and uh, feel free to continue doing so throughout the broadcast. If you're catching the simulcast over on the YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell as well over there. If you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, please visit jkdrebel.com. Click on the Rebel Gear link, and that's where you'll see stuff like this, the four tenets of uh, G Kondo t-shirt, long sleeve, short sleeve, uh, hoodie, sweatshirt, uh, coffee mug. Not like this one, but coffee mug. Um, but of course, the best thing you can do is to share this video and spread the word about the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. Okay, I am woefully unprepared. I didn't pull the two books where you can find lists of the Jeet Kune Do attributes, but they're on, on the pages of um, Sifu Dan and Sano's JKD, The Art and Philosophy of Bruce Lee book as well as in Tim Tackett and Chris Kent's uh, uh, um, Jeet Kune Do, the textbook. And I think many of us will attest to Paul Vunak put in JKD attribute training on the proverbial map of the JKD world with his, I'll make a little joke here, with his at times seemingly never ending series on the topic of attributes, right? Um, so to refresh your mind, the definition of attributes in UMAA, Miami Jeet Kune Do um, parlance goes like this. Attributes are the qualities which enable the skillful execution of technique, right? So in the old days, I used to talk about uh, Michael Jackson. It's probably a, 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 a metaphor or reference that I got from Sifu Dan. Um, so I used to talk about Michael Jackson and Michael Jackson. Not Michael Jackson, Dwight. Michael Jordan. Jeez. Michael. <laughs> like I said, I am woefully unprepared for today's broadcast. I used to talk about Michael Jordan and him having the same responsibilities as any other uh, shooting guard in the NBA. Uh, but what made him stand out? Attributes. His speed his spatial relationship, his precision, his accuracy. You see what I'm doing there, right? I'm making specific martial art mentions. And then, of course, his ability to defy gravity. Um, similarly, Bruce Lee kicked, Bruce Lee punched, Bruce Lee trapped, Bruce Lee grappled, Bruce Lee swung sticks and spun nunchaku. Um, much like other people in martial arts and in martial art films, but we know what goes on with Bruce Lee, right? Um, I feel compelled to talk to you today about attributes because it's, it's connected to that trend uh, that I've been railing against over the past couple of weeks um, regarding the Jeet Kune Do Historical Preservation Society. So let's, let's, um, let's go back. In the beginning, let's say, um, take Muay Thai, for example. The idea, or one of the ideas, was to train that, that stuff and then to use a popular phrase, extract its essence and adapt it to Jeet Kune Do. Um, kind of like drill it to get the feel of it and then work it into the sparring. So when Sifu Dan started getting into Muay Thai, if Ajahn Chai had passed by the Jeet Kune Do class at, um, at the Kali Academy, he would have seen the guys trying to work the knee in the clinch, maybe even the knee and the elbow in the clinch. So it would have looked a little bit like Thai boxing, but not exa exactly like Thai boxing because no one was trying to be a Thai boxer. They weren't trying to acquire the look of a Nak Moy. Um, which is interesting because in commentaries on the Marshall Way, Bruce Lee does make a comment about um, 
how, yeah, it looks a little bit by Thai, like Thai boxing, but in Jeet Kune Do, there's no third round. So I'm not saying that Bruce Lee was around in the 1980s when Ajahn Chai and Sifu Dan got together. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's kind of coincidentally funny or funnily coincidental that Bruce Lee does make a, a mention that JKD looks a little bit like Muay Thai, right? Um, and then in the Art and Philosophy book, and I apologize, I don't have them in front of me here, but there is a, there is a section there where Sifu Dan writes that, um, you know, at various times, Jeet Kune Do could look like boxing, it could look like kickboxing, it could look like this, it could look like that, right? Um, so to get back to my point, by investigating Muay Thai the, and uh, even the Muay Thai clinch, um, the JKD fighters were developing an ability to manipulate their opponent's center of gravity while throwing some offensive upper and lower body techniques at close quarter range. So that's a reason for investigating Muay Thai, being able to develop that kind of attribute. Something similar, obviously, would have occurred or would occur even today if and when you were to use boxing, if and when you were to use Wing Chun, Right, if and when you were to use any other uh, art that you that that you were trying to determine if it had any practical um, application or practical adaptation to 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 um, within Jeet Kune Do. The thing that happened though over the years is that as the opportunity and the ability to train in depth with different instructors. In these different arts, there was a subtle shift away from adapting these arts. There was a subtle shift away from that and a shift towards like a full embracing of the art, like embracing the art wholesale. And in some instances, as separate entities, which is how we end up today with. Jeet Kune Do being featured as one of the arts or one of the styles that you offer at your school, right? And where <laughs> some say it's offered in a fun way. It, it, I call it the fun historical preservative way, right? Okay. So anyhow, I, I'll leave you with these two, these two last things. Be careful not to take the attribute development thing too far. Because, for example, you need balance in martial arts, agreed? And you need balance in surfing. But that doesn't make surfing a martial arts training method. I am a self taught drummer. And so I can tell you that playing percussion requires rhythm, requires hand eye coordination as well as a thing called limb independence, um, hands and feet doing different things at the same time. And all of that has martial art application. But I would never tell you that playing drums will automatically help to improve your martial art. Remember, th this is what my, my, my favorite Canadian uh, JKD senior, Cass Magna, says. Best way to develop the attribute for skillful execution of the technique is to use the attribute while practicing the technique, right? So, so the best way to develop speed in punching is to train punching speedily, right? Not work Filipino double stick to get your hand fast. And, anyhow, okay. Anyhow, right? So in, in fact, I should say I am currently... Um, on my Facebook page, doing um, a free video series on this kind of thing. It's actually, um, the title of it is Why My Kali is JKD Tinged. So go over to my page, uh, Dwight D. Woods, if you want to take a look at that. Talking about pages, I got hacked on uh, Instagram. So if you were, uh, uh, is, is it friend followers on Instagram, and you're getting anything uh, crypto, from me, it's not me. 
that that account has been hacked. Um, interestingly enough, I've been trying to to recover it and I can recover it somewhat on my laptop, but I cannot recover it on my phone. I don't know how these things work. Anyhow, just so Instagram right now is not me. If I, it, 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 I, I will go back on Instagram, but probably as, as, um, as the JKD rebel. Anyhow, enough about me, right? So, um, uh, well, well, that's what I was supposed to tell you, All right? But uh, whatever. Anyhow, okay, so let me know what you think about this whole um, Jeet Kune Do attribute training thing. That's all I got to say about this uh, video. So if you like what you heard, comment, rate, subscribe, ask questions, hit the notification bell over on the YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods and very soon on Instagram at uh, JKD Rebel. Um, the raw but edited version of the Jeet Kune Do Journey Volume 1 is available. PayPal.me slash Unified MA Miami. And um, I'm going to fix that also and make it easier for you guys to get your hands on a copy of that. Um, coming up on Friday, another reverse dialogue, another reverse Jeet Kune Do dialogue with another um, hugely, hugely likable favorite Filipino colleague of, of mine. I don't know what's up with me and reverse dialogues with Filipino guys that I find interesting who have the word aperture in their 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 um their their setups, right? So Russell uh, Dulé, who many of you um, know, will be uh, will reverse dialogue. Uh, he and I, um, Russell it, it, Russell's outfit is called a uh, Warrior Aperture Academy. So that should be Friday at six p.m. He's on the West Coast, but I think. 6 p.m. works. Um, yeah, and that'll, that'll be it, right? So I don't even have to stand up. You can see this is uh, today is a red day. And here's the the um, the baddest ass uh, nunchaku ka ever, <laughs> right? Okay, so enough fooling around. Um, I'll see you guys on Friday at 6. If not, I'll see you next week for another issue of the um, I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast, but check out the, the Kali JKD tinge thing over on, on my Facebook page. And uh, that's it. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, stay safe. Talk soon. Take care.